This is a step-by-step -step simulation for the Microsoft IT Academy uh, in Word and it's to help you pass your Microsoft Office uh, Word 2013 specialist certification test. Some of the resources were borrowed from the NASA website. Let's begin. The first thing you need to do is open Word 2013 and we're going to start a new document. So we go to File and New. Okay, we're going to want a blank document, so we select the blank document. Off. Okay, this is what it should look like when you begin. Now, the first thing you have to do is utilize your text source to get the text into your document. We have two text files, our solar system and scientific advances in astronomy. So what I'm going to do is go to my source file. Your teacher or instructor will show you where your shared folder is. Uh, this is where mine is on my computer. I'm going to go ahead and open uh, our solar system. Now here's the text file. I'm going to select Control A to select all the text and I'm going to copy that, Control C. And I'm also going to close my window and I'm going to do a Control V to paste the text. Okay, now notice my cursor is at the end of the last file. I know I need to insert some more text, so what I'm going to do is hit Enter to put my cursor on a new line. I'm going to go back to my folder and my um, sources folder. The second text file is in advances, uh, scientific advances in astronomy, so I'm going to go ahead and open that. Same thing. Control A, Control C. You can close yours if you would like. I'm going to minimize mine. I have my cursor where I want to, so I'm going to Control V to paste it. Okay, now notice that my cursor is right beside the X. It's not below it. It doesn't have any extra spaces at the end. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, now I'm going to go up to the top of my document, Control Home. And let's look at the next uh, setting. It says we need to change the page color to blue accent one lighter 20. That's going to be under the Design tab. Uh, page color is in the last group, the page background group. And I happen to have mine selected, I believe, to the right thing. I'm going to use my Smart tag to look at my selection, make sure I've got the right one. And there it is. So I'm going to click OK once I've uh, verified that. Now we're going to go to a theme. Themes are on the same ribbon. I'm going to go to the very first tool, Download, and it's Celestial. I'm going to click on this one. All right, we've applied our theme. Now we're going to change the theme. We're going to change the theme font to Arial. So we're going to go to Fonts, and we're going to select Arial. And we're going to change the colors to Orange Red. So I'm going to go to Colors, and go down to Orange Red, and select that as well. Okay, that is all of our theme uh, setting. Now we're going to go to apply normal style. Um, this is a little confusing. It says in text normal to body. What I'm going to do, I, I don't have any uh, headings or anything in my document right now. I don't have those styles applied. So I'm going to go ahead and control all, select all, and apply normal to all of the document. I go to the home tab under styles and select normal. It just so happens that it is also already in that, um, that format. Okay, but even if it is, go ahead and apply it. There's a couple things that may be on the test that, that ask you to apply something, and you might think, well, I think that's already applied, but just go ahead and go through the steps. Um, title style, the first thing we need to do to the title style before we apply it is modify the size. So we're going to go up here to the style's title. We're going to click on modify, and we're going to change the size to 36 points and click OK. Now it says to apply it to exploring our solar system. It's the first paragraph, of course, so we're going to do that. We're going to apply the title. It should look like that when you're done. The next step is apply heading to styles. Let's go ahead and see where we're supposed to apply that. Uh, we'll locate the text. The first uh, heading to is list of planets in our solar, solar system. It's paragraph six. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs, so we're going to go down here. Select it and apply heading two. The second one is dwarf planets and KBOs, and that is going to be on our second text file that we included. So we're going to go down to dwarf planets and CEOs, highlight it. That's a heading two style. The third one is the planet debate, the planet hood debate. So I'm going to go here. I'm clicking three times to select that paragraph. It's the easy way to do it instead of using my mouse. 
and then I apply the Heading 2 style there. Now we apply Heading 1 style. So we're going to go back to the top of our document. Okay, the first Heading 1 is what is a planet. I can just see that in front of me. It's paragraph uh, 4. So I'm going to click 3, Heading 1 style. The second one is planet or not. That's in the second text file that we included. So we're going to go down to the second text file and we're going to find, it's kind of hiding there, just on that very end of that second page. I'm going to click three and apply the heading one style. First thing on that second um, text file. Now we're going to go to planet characteristics. That's right below the tabbed information at the bottom of the document. I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to apply the heading one style there as well. Those are the heading one styles. Orientation, landscape. That is a page layout ribbon tool. So we go to page layout, we go to orientation, it's like landscape. Margins is also on the page layout, happens to be the first tool. We're going to have to go down to custom margins and we're going to put in 0.65 for the top, the bottom, the left and the right margins and click OK and it's applied to our document. Now we need to apply a section break. We're going to use a next page section break before planet or not. That was the first heading in our second text file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cursor right before the P in planet. Now on the page layout tab I'm going to go to breaks and I'm going to use the next page break which will apply that text to a new page. Okay, so we go down here and it is on its own page now. Drop cap. We are going to go to the top of our document. Uh, we're going to use a dropped, dropped cap with two lines. The location is the first paragraph in the body. Science is a dynamic process. So I'm going to go to control home and I, ha I can be anywhere in that paragraph. It doesn't matter. I'm going to insert uh, a drop cap and I'm going to go down to drop cap options because I am going to use drop cap but I'm going to have to apply uh, two lines so I'm going to, do, I'm going to uh, move the three to two and click OK and it's going to automatically take the first letter in that paragraph. Columns. The first thing we have to do with columns is locate the text in the document. It says Mercury through Neptune so I'm going to go down here it's a listing of our planets. I'm going to highlight Mercury and through Neptune. Now notice there is another Mercury beneath the list of our planets in our solar system. Do not include that in your selection. Once I'm there, I go to Page Layout. I'm going to go to Columns. and It specifies three. I'm going to select three. And it puts it in three columns. Now what we're going to do is go to the next uh, setting, which is going to create a list out of our selection we have. So. I am going to uh, create a list using a custom bullet. So I'm, I'm going to my home ribbon where my um, bullets are located. I'm going to use a down arrow and I'm going to define a new bullet. It's going to be a picture and I'm going to have to browse for it. It's going to be in the source uh, folder and it's going to be a picture of the earth. I'm going to click insert and OK. All right, now our bullets have, uh, now our list has a Earth bullet. Now, we're not done with our bullets yet. We have to modify the list tab. So we're going to right click and we're going to adjust list in indents. Um, let's see, the, the bullet position needs to be 0.4 and the text indent needs to be 0.65. I have already uh, applied those exercise. So you go ahead and put those in and click OK. All right. Now we're down to Smart Art. This is the last thing that appears on our first page. We're almost done with page one. Now, where I start with Smart Art is I look and see what kind of text goes into the Smart Art. And what I'm going to do is read down in my directions. It says Content for Shape, Level 1, Names of Planets, Level 2, Orbit, Diameter, and Mass. All right, now we have, if you look here, we have each of the planets in our solar system and beneath it we have orbit, diameter, and mass. There's Mercury, then there's Venus's orbit, diameter, and mass, and it goes on to Earth and so on. So we're going to go all the way down through the planets in our solar system to the very last one. And what I do is I hit Control X to cut that text from my document. I have my mouse or my cursor in my document exactly where I want it uh, to be. It's right underneath my list. I go to Insert and it's smart art 
and it just so happens to be the very first thing uh, basic block list so I click on that I click OK now the thing about smart art is it's gonna look really kind of strange at first the way that I go through it but it does end up working out um, notice that when you have a smart art, art you have an arrow here so I'm going to click the arrow and that is going to allow me to um, manipulate the text in my smart art. I prefer to go ahead and take all those bullets and delete them and then I control V to paste all the text. Now it's going to look funny at first but don't let that bother you. Alright now we have all the text we need but now all we need to do is we need to demote some of those bullets. So we're going to go to orbit, diameter, and mass for each of those planets and we're going to demote it. Okay, now I'm going to click on the smart art and I'm going to apply the rest of the settings. I'm going to go to positions. I'm going to go to more layout options. And I like to go here because here we have all of our options. We have position, text wrapping, and size. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the size. Um, the size of our smart art is supposed to be uh, horizontal. Go to the size tab. Uh, the height is supposed to be 1.88 and then the width of our uh, smart art is 6.62 alright once I have that applied I'm going to go to text wrapping the text wrapping for the smart art is supposed to be tight select tight then I can go to the position the position the horizontal alignment is centered relative to margin so I'm going to go to alignment centered relative to margin. The vertical position is bottom relative to margin. So I'm going to go to alignment, whoops, bottom relative to margin. Okay, now I'm going to click OK. And then a lot of what I need to do has been done through that dialog box, but there's still some uh, settings that we need to apply. One of them is the color of our smart art. So I'm going to go to design and we have a color scheme here. It says that we want to apply the colorful range, which is this range, and it says um, colors two to three. So I'm going to use my smart tag. And here I can see colorful range accent two to three. I've applied that. Okay, that's everything with smart art, except for the smart art caption. That's the last thing for our page. So let's go to smart art caption. Captions, first of all, we have to have the smart art selected, which we do. Then we go to references to apply um, the caption to whatever object we have. I'm going to go to insert caption. Now, it says that this is going to be a figure, and right now mine's set to table, so I'm going to go back to figure and it's going to go below selected item which is the default and the text to accompany the option I'm going to put it up here beside my one I'm going to put space and I'm going to put uh, planetary facts from nano and more dot com and that is all I need to do I click OK and we're done with page one Now we're ready to tackle page two. Okay, the first thing you're going to do in page two is insert a picture. And you have the source file for that, so we're going to go to insert. Uh, well, first I'm going to put the um, insertion point somewhere on page two. I wasn't sure where it was. Then I'm going to go to insert picture. I'm going to my source file folder, and this is the picture you want, Planetail Plan Orbit. I'm just going to click insert. Okay, and I'm going to handle this the way I handled the other thing. I always like to go to position and all the way down to more layout options because I have most of my settings that I'm going to need to um, access. Alright, so let's start with size. The size of our picture is supposed to be 2.26 inches high 
and 3.01 inches wide. Okay, so it's 2.26. and it's going to adjust automatically to 3.01 without uh, changing the aspect ratio. Okay, now also what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change my text wrapping. The text wrapping for your picture is supposed to be square, so we're going to select the square one. And lastly, we're going to assign um, or set the, the, um, the position of the picture. So let's look at the horizontal and vertical positions. Uh, horizontal is right relative to margin. and vertical is top relative to margin. We're going to click OK and when you finish your picture should look similar to the one on the video. The next setting is going to be to insert a footnote. Uh, let's start with the location. It's going to be the first paragraph under planet or not. Okay, so there's planet or not. We're looking for the word um, telescope. That is the text that is going to be associated with the footnote. Whoops. I'm going to double click the word. That's going to select it. And then I go to uh, references and insert footnote. Okay, that's going to place me at the bottom of the page and my directions tell me what to place inside the footnote. It says to include the words Royal Canadian Astronomical Society 1964. So I'm going to go ahead also and change the font uh, color of the footnote, which our directions tell us to do. I highlight the font. And we're supposed to go to the Home tab where we can find our font color tool. And you want to pick out the correct font, which is dark red, accent to darker 25%. I believe it's this one. Let's see if my smart art will pop up. Yes, that's it. We'll click on it and we're done with our footnote. The next setting we need to address is the hyperlink. Okay, again, we're going to start with the location. It's the fir first paragraph under Dwarf Planets and KBOs. So let's find that. Here we go. And it's the word International Astronomical Union. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight just those words, not the acronym. All right, and we're going to include a, a hyperlink. So we go to the Insert ribbon, and here you have a hyperlink. It's going to actually go to a web address. And that web address is given into our, in our directions. That is um, HTTP www.iau.org. And we're going to click OK. Now, if you would like, you can test it by holding your hand on Control and clicking on the hyperlink. It should go to that web page. We also have a similar direction, which is a bookmark. And we're going to name the bookmark what is a planet and the bookmark is going to be applied it says to planet or not so I'm going to go ahead and highlight the first uh, title I'm sorry the first heading on the second page and I'm going it's on the insane ribbon insert near the hyperlink because it's similar to a hyperlink but it's just something that is going to help you hyperlink inside the document itself I'm going to click on book note and all I have to do is give it the name my directions tell me which is what is a planet when I'm done I click add now you're ready to tackle the text box where I like to start with the text box is the actual text is going to be inserted into the box and your directions tell you to include this particular text the planet head debate all the way through to the end of that particular paragraph now I'm going to cut that control X and I'm going to go ahead and leave my cursor where it is it's just as good a place as any I'm going to insert and I'm going to go to text box now I'm looking for the simple quote so I'm going to go down to the S's and there it is I click on it. Notice that the placement text has already highlighted. I just hit backspace. I hit control V to copy. Now I see a little messiness here and that is that I have an extra return. My cursor is below the text so I'm going to hit backspace to get rid of that extra text. Now I'm ready to apply my settings. I'm going to go to the position or layout options and we're going to start with size. The size is supposed to be 4.05 and then the width is 1.85 so I'm just going to go ahead and change that 7 to a 5 that's our size uh, text wrapping is set by default to square so I don't have to change that I'm going to go position 
Now, the horizontal is left relative to margin. The vertical is an absolute position of two. So I'm gonna go in here, change that number below. Now, watch carefully here. It's not the margin, it's the top margin. You have to pay very close attention to your directions. This is one place where you get thrown off and lose points. Now I have all my settings, I'm gonna click OK. And if you have placed your text box correctly, the uh, accompanying uh, paragraph, Dwarf Planets and KBOs, should be right to the uh, right of the text box. And planet. The last part of page two is going to include a table. And like a lot of other objects we place in our document, where I like to start with a table is the contents, especially since we're going to create our table uh, converting text to table. All right, so we're going to go to the first part of the text we need, which is uh, placing our cursor right underneath planet characteristics to what makes a planet. I'm going to use the shift button to anchor my selection. I'm going to go to end, and I'm going to use the down arrow button. I like to use the shift because it gives me a lot more control over what I select. All right, now, I'm not going to uh, cut my text because I want to convert it to a table. So I'm going to go to insert table, convert text to table, all right, and our directions tell us we need three columns. Notice that when we place three columns, it, it automatically knows how many rows we need. And it also tells us that we are going to auto fit to contents. Now, one other thing that we have to make sure is that we are separating our text at the paragraphs. In other words, every time there's an enter, it means that it's going to place the next text into it, the next column. Then we're going to click OK. And the basic shape of your table should look like this. Now I'm going to click inside the table because the next thing I have to do is apply a style. I'm going to look for the correct style in my settings, which is grid table four accent six, which is this one. I'm going to click that. All right, and I believe that's all the settings I need to set on my table. The only thing that is left is a table caption. So I'm going to go to references and I'm going to insert the caption. It's table. It's below the selected item. It's not a figure. And there's some text associated with it. I'm going to space and I'm going to put exploring our solar system NASA. And I'm going to click OK. Very good. OK, so this is what your, ta your, your second page should look like, something very similar to this. Now all we have to do is we have to apply the overall settings for our document. Okay, one of the things we need to do is we need to go to view and we need to make sure our ruler is showing. So if you did not have your ruler showing on your word, you need to click that. That's how you show your ruler. And another thing we're going to do is we're going to go to properties. Uh, so we're going to go to file and we're going to go to information and over here we see that we have our properties for our document and we need to look at the subject for our um, document. I don't see subjects listed. Okay, so when that's the case then what I need to do is come down here and click on show all properties and I look for subject and here it is now. I click beside subject to go ahead and include what it is and the subject for the document is solar system. Okay, I've got that in my document. Now, um, now we stay on the backstage and we're going to go down to our save, our options. We have a couple of, uh, several different options we're going to change. So go down here to option. We're going to start out with save, our save option. So I'm going to go to the save tab. We need to look for these two uh, options. Save auto recover information every 12 minutes. Okay, so here we have eight set by default or on my system. I'm gonna go ahead and increase that to 12. Um, and it says also another save option is we need to place save to computer by default. Okay, so this is, we have to look for it. And here it is, save to computer by default. We need to make sure a check mark is placed there. All right, now we're going to go to proofing options. So we're going to go to this tab. And we need to show readability statistics when we uh, work on our document. So we're going to look for readability statistics. And it happens to be one of the last ones here on the first um, 
page there. We're going to go ahead and make sure that's checked. Uh, another one is high grammar errors in this document only. Okay, we're going to go down here, and here we have it. The very last one, high grammar er errors in this document only. Okay, so that was the last proofing option. Now we need to show content options. Now, you would probably have to look a while. The first thing I thought of when it said show content was display, but it's actually an advanced so we're going to go, go ahead and look under general and it says that we want to show picture placeholders. If you look at the sections, it says editing options, cut, copy, and paste, image size and quality, and show document content, which is also our heading next to um, our um, setting. So it's probably going to be there. And it says show picture placeholders, and there it is right there, show pictures placeholders. So click it and click OK and make sure you don't have an extra page there double check your work make sure when you take that test you save your work and you are done congratulations good luck on your test